Here we are at the beginning of the second decade of the 21st century. What is the current state of affairs with Millennium Thinking? In some regards, the cultural war in America has caused a shift in Millennium Thinking. Dispensationalism has lost its monopoly with premillennialism. The aloof social attitude of classic dispensationalism has lost ground to a new premillennialism that is engaging our society in hopes of creating a brighter future for America. Secular postmillennialism has awakened from its idealistic slumber to realize that evil and sin does exist in the world. September 11th proved this point. We also have witnessed the compassionate ministries seen in the social gospel movement of the early 20th century find fertile soil in premillennial Protestant thinking. A modified form of postmillennialism is also experiencing a comeback in the justice movement and the MICA project of mainline Christianity today. Whatever happened to the Antichrist? Generally, the belief in a future Antichrist has waned around the world, with one noted exception, and that is dispensationalism within the United States. Generally, Roman Catholics and Lutherans no longer teach or speak about the Antichrist. Premillennialism is changing. Because of the misfires of dispensationalist authors and televangelists that have caused Christianity in America to become skeptical of any future predictions, you can cry wolf only so many times before the people no longer heed your voice. Is there a future for dispensational premillennialism? Yes, there is. All dispensationalism needs is another big score from Schofield's script, like Israel in 1948, and the excitement will return. Prophecy watchers are still watching, but dispensationalists must be more cautious about blending current events into their prophetic timetables. But all the indications coming from the popular prophecy teachers on TV today indicate that their predictions are becoming more ludicrous and extreme. Apocalyptic themes are commonplace in the world today. Christianity no longer has a monopoly on the destruction of planet Earth. The secular media sees the money found in fear. Therefore, every conceivable end of the world scenario fills the airwaves with fear mongering. We have now come full circle. We are now back to the apocalyptic speculation being pushed on us by secular fear mongers. Could extreme forms of millennium fever still find expression in our society today? Sadly, the answer is yes. I see apocalyptic fear coming more from secular and fringe religious groups gripped with survivalist attitudes than from the traditional Christian church. We are waiting for the coming of 2012. One might think that I am opposed to all forms of millennium theology, but this is not true. I also have my opinions concerning a literal second coming of Jesus Christ and a future millennium. The optimal word in what I just said is opinion. To quote Ralph Abernathy, the great civil rights activist, I do not know what the future may hold but I know who holds the future. Should you be a historicist? That's fine. Hold on to your beliefs. Should you be a dispensationalist? 
No problem. Believe what you want. Should you believe in post-millennial doctrine or even amillennialism? That's okay too. It's your choice. Believe what you want, but never lose sight of the fact that all forms of eschatology are theories and should never be seen in the same light as sacred scripture. The theologians of each school of eschatology all claim to support their interpretation with scriptural proof. Everyone uses the Bible and all believe their understanding of the Bible is the only correct interpretation. Who is right? Who is wrong? Only time will tell. How should we handle all these competing voices? It is simple. We are to heed the words of Jesus and occupy till He comes, because He will come back.